Hey folks, Engineer 775. This is where I find myself often, and that's down at my well. Um, why am I here? Well, I got this silly siphon. That's for a future project. Stay tuned for a well siphon ram pump video. But the real reason I'm here is to do a little shout out to a friend and another YouTube channel. It's On3 with Jason Salyer. I've been watching his channel, it's really good. Um, I talked to Jason a couple years ago about a water solution for his shallow well, and he went and put it in. So that's what this video is about. He's gonna show you that. And also, uh, check out his channel. Uh, he's got silly guests uh, like Alan Kay from the History Channel's Alone series, and those two are uh, very entertaining. But Jason's got some good, good information on his site and for preparedness and all sorts of things. So um, let's, uh, Let's uh, check out this video and see how well he did. And look at the pressure rising. With each pump, I'm getting a couple PSI. <laughs> Woo! Welcome back. I am Jason Salyer, and today I am installing an Excelsior hand pump for my well. Ask yourself this question. If the power should go out right now, if the water supply should shut down, if you're on city water or whatever it may be, if, even if you have your own, your own personal well, if power's down, water's not flowing, what do you do? What do you do for your basic water needs? Drinking water, bathing water, washing dishes, flushing toilets, all that stuff. What would you do? Um, if your answer is, I don't know, then that's a problem. Before today, I've had to get buckets out of the creek if the power's out carry buckets back, dump them into a Berkey water filter, boil the water, whatever it may be, pour it down the toilet and flush it, and all that good stuff. Um, and I'm going to remedy that today by installing this pump. Basically what I've got going on is the main water supply coming to the house from the well is right here. And it's going to run through a series of T's and 90's and valves and, a, and the pump and all of that to go to my uh, pressure tank. And this hand pump here is going to pressurize my tank. And that tank with the air bladder inside of it is going to allow water to flow to all of the uh, places in the house that might require it, like the toilets and the sinks and all that kind of stuff. Now, obviously, it's going to be limited. You're going to be able to fill up this tank, pressurize the tank, and then when that tank pressure runs out, it's going to stop flowing and then you'll have to hit this pump again. But it's a whole heck of a lot better than having to run to the creek, which is 50 yards from the house with buckets and all that kind of stuff. This is going to be much, much easier just to go down to the basement pump this thing a few times and fill this thing up. So the first thing we gotta do is shut off power to the actual pump that's submerged in the bottom of that 300 foot well out there. Lines here, drain the water from the lowest point in the house here. And I'll also drain it in there in the utility room. Just waiting on the last little bit of water to drain out of the lines here. Um, but as I do this, I just I think taking steps like this towards um, your preparations are just essential because it will help maintain normalcy in a grid down kind of situation. I don't know. I don't. The world is a freaking crazy place right now, and it it's a bit saddening to to listen to all that's going on, and uh, most of it's just chatter and nonsense. I'm sure. Uh, rumors and everybody's theories going around about what's going to happen and it's just that it's just rumors and theories we won't know until we know um, as Alan Kay says you don't know what you don't know and we don't know what's going to happen but we can do our best to prepare um, our families for um, what we think is the most likely situations most likely situation, it's winter time around here. <laughs> Most likely situation, there's going to be winter storms and trees are going to come down and our power is going to go out. Um, major grid down? I don't know, maybe. But I say let it come um, because there's nothing I can really do about it. There's no, I can't. I can't change what's going on in Washington right now. I, I, I've cast my vote and I've done my part. Um, you know, I, I there's zero sense in me worrying about what's going on in in that area of the world right now. What I can do, what I can do, I can control the controllable. I can have a positive influence. I can have a positive effect on the people that I come in contact with on a daily basis. I can have a positive effect on you watching this video. 
I can, um, you know, brighten up the world a little bit with, I've, I have been blessed. I, if there's one thing that I have been blessed with, it, it's a, it's a positive mental attitude. I, I can stay positive. The sun is shining on the worst days. I can, I can stay happy, go lucky, no matter how miserable I am. And I'm, I'm very good at that. Um, and I hope that comes through on my videos. Um, I've got the lines drained out, and now it's time to uh, cut into our primary water line here. And it always makes me a little bit nervous doing this, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but sometimes you just gotta gotta go on three, which is the name of my YouTube channel, by the way. If you haven't checked out my personal YouTube channel, you should. It's, it's called On Three. First thing I need to insert is a T. Fourteen and a half. Good. There we go. Now we need to install a valve. All right, so I've got to thread this onto here and that's gonna insert into my PVC fitting. Never been one to go stingy on the glue. I like to really glob it on there. Now listen, I'm not an expert plumber by any means, right? I, I um. I like to do a lot of my own home, well, all of my own home repairs, and I like to be self-reliant as much as possible. And I go into every project with the attitude, with the mindset that, that there's nothing that I can't do. There's no challenge too big for me to take on. I can figure it out. Might take me a minute. It might be a lot easier. It might be even cheaper sometimes to hire somebody to bring, to come in and do it. But um, I just, I, I really enjoy doing the stuff myself. And I like learning it. I like learning the process. I'm kind of a jack of all trades. I want to be that multi-tool. I want to be an expert of nothing, but proficient at a lot of things. Plumbing is one of those things. All right, so we've gotten our T. We've got a 90. We've got a valve. We've got a T to our tap right there to drain the line out when this pump is not in use. Now we get to put the pump in. Mm, I don't know. What we're gonna do with that yet. <laughs> Have to take a look at it for a minute. There's that. So now what? I think a lot of us in the future, well, hopefully not, but a lot of us are gonna to have to start being a lot more self-reliant in the near future. There we go. And that is like a friggin' rock. Cool. Now, I've got the pump installed here. I've got to connect here to here with a short section of pipe, and I think there's enough play here where I can squeeze it in. And then after our pump, we're going to go to another T. Where are you at? Another T to a valve, and then we'll finish it off and connect it back into our main line. This valve right here, what I just installed right there, is going, there's nothing connects to this. This is the end of it. It's just going to stay off for the most part, um, except when I'm draining the pump out right there. I'll open that up, and that will allow airflow to come out and let all the water come out of the pump. Also, what that's going to be used for is when the pump is not in use, and you, after you drain all the water out, I'm going to pour some mineral oil down in that in that hole here and that's going to coat the internal mechanism of the pump and allow it or keep it from rusting rather because it is made of cast iron i really like things like this this manpower 
um, mechanical type thing, to, type device, because it's most likely not going to fail you. I don't like generators. I hate all that kind of stuff. Solar panels and powers and batteries and all that nonsense irritates the crap out of me because it's complicated. Uh, involves a lot of technology. <laughs> Um, and then the generators, when you really need them, they don't work because let's be honest, nobody ever really maintains them like they should. Um, and it's just, they're just a pain in the neck. So I can't stand them. And I like simple. I've also got to install a check valve. Um, this check valve allows water to flow in only one direction. It's going to flow through through the valve, uh, check valve this way, but it can't go back this way because I just flipped you guys off. Sorry. <laughs> so so uh, it's got a spring-loaded little piston kind of valve in there, and the water pressure as I pump will open it up, and then it will spring back and close it so the water can't flow backwards back towards the well. Valve 90, 90, check valve done, T done. Oh, I forgot about that valve that needs to go right here. It's going to be a little bit tight. Hope I didn't screw that up. We're about to find out. have a filtration system. Question is, do I need to bypass the filtration system? I don't know. My hunch says yes, I need to bypass the filtration system because it might be too much, require too much pressure to go through the filter and all of that. But I don't know. So we'll see. Let me think about it. Like so. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Get some of that. Mom, yeah. I lost my tooth, but I didn't even know. And I can't find it now. Did you, you swallow it? No, I would feel bad. Okay, you lost wait, wait. Did, let me, uh, look at you! I didn't even know. Okay. Now I lost That's, my tooth. Okay, let me see your tooth. Uh, I didn't your teeth even go? know where it went. Did, yes, that's a good one. Ah, oh, my arm's cramping up. <laughs> <laughs> my scent was getting a cramp. It must be about $600 total to get this done. Um, for the pump, the pump was a little over 500 bucks. And then the PVC attachments and um, uh, valves and all that kind of stuff added up to a little bit over $600 right at it. Total about six hours of labor. That includes getting the materials, getting all the parts. And I ordered this pump through Scott Hunt. Um, he operates Practical Preppers and is Engineer775 on YouTube. So Engineer775 on YouTube. Look him up because he's the one that came out here and advised me that this is what I needed. And he knows way more about this stuff than I do. Um, but for $600 and six hours of my life now, well, as long as everything works, I'm going to be able to have flowing, running water in my house all the time, whether the power's on or not. And that, to me, is much more valuable than $600. So let's give it a couple hours to rest, and then I'll turn everything on and we'll leak check and see how it works. Moment of truth. It's been... I don't know, going on a couple hours now since I finished that last joint. 
We're gonna flip on the uh, power to the pump and let the water flow. And I want everyone to take a moment to pray for no leaks. I will wait. Okay. All right, so we've got water flowing from our well through our line. That valve is off, so nothing's going to our pump yet. We're going through here. Everything's off till right here. This valve lets the water fill the lines back up in the house. So I'll let that happen. Plumbing makes me extremely nervous when I turn everything back on for some reason. I've had a couple of... Uh, bad experiences and so far so good. So now what I would need to do if I wanted to actually use this pump for real, I would turn this off to bypass the filtration system and then I would turn this on right there to allow water to go straight through and not have to go through the filtration system. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn on all the valves to the house. I'm going to turn this valve off right here, and this one is what allows the water to not just flow directly through our, to our pressure tank and then to the house, it stops the flow of water directly through and makes it go through our pump. And I'm going to turn this valve on, hopefully that's off, that's off, there we go. So now... In theory, if I needed to fill up my pressure tank, this is how I would do it. All right, I flipped the breaker, so the power is off to the pump. So power's out at the house right now, essentially. Um, now we're gonna test our pump to see, after I drain a little bit of water out here. So the pump wasn't working initially, and I was bothered by it tremendously, and I could not figure out what was going on. And I, then I thought to myself, well, maybe there's no water actually in the pump yet, and I didn't prime it. So I opened this up and let it breathe a little bit, and it psh, spurted out some air. And now, listen, that's the sound of water flowing. And look at the pressure rising. With each pump, I'm getting a couple PSI. <laughs> Woo! Look at that! Grit down, we don't care! <laughs> That's awesome! So it's working. We're moving some water now. Sage, this is gonna be your job. <laughs> Put that thing out in the face! <laughs> oh, wow. This makes life relatively normal, even without power. No more going to the creek for buckets, none of that. No more having to boil the water. We can fill up our Berkey upstairs in the kitchen with the, with the kitchen sink with this, done. And that makes us that more self-reliant, that, that much more independent. Look at that, that's awesome. So that is a big, big, win. Scott Hunt, thanks for sending the pump. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you guys joining in uh, on this quick do-it-yourself uh, install of the Excelsior pump. See you next time. Hit that thumbs up.